What you doing? Nothing. What are you listening to? Uh, jazz, like I always do. Y you don't always listen to jazz. I do. I do no, always listen no. to jazz. There, what was 50 Cent doing? Well, he's kind of jazz. Uh. He's like, sure. he's like new school jazz. New, uh, new school jazz. Okay. Alright. Well, um, just sitting there at the table. I, yes, uh, sorry, my uh, camera's about to turn on. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, alright. Welcome to Tasting with the Dirty. white tie today because this is a white tie type of whiskey we believe. Today we are going to taste a very very special whiskey. This one actually is a very very good whiskey um, in my opinion. I already think that the doji is going to approve so not to spoil any spoilers but this particular one really needs to be spoiled. So without further to do whoops, 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 whoops. Glen Morangi Nectar Dur something. Maybe it's Glen Morangi Morangi E. No one knows how to say it. Even the people that make it don't know how to say it. But I will tell you that it has a very rich history. Over 170 years has gone into actually making this particular whiskey itself. What's really interesting about this particular one is it's like a journey of passion, really into the footsteps of the pioneers that really started whiskey. It's extra matured and they really put the extra step into making it. Part of the biggest thing about this particular whiskey is that we know from our last time on uh, whiskeys is that the box really is very important. And this box actually opens like a book to reveal the whiskey itself. So you know it's better than better because you don't have to do the little tabs on the top like all these behind me. You can just open it up like a book and just get to drinking. So without further ado or to do, we are gonna open this up. Um, we also know that we need to have a regular cork and not a Himalayan cork. Even though cork trees are endangered, I still prefer corks over Himalayan corks. So, it's very, very nice, and unfortunately, this is not real cork. So kudos to them for saving the environment, but it's a point docked because of the fact that it's not real cork. So, let's pour ourselves a glass here and see how we look. Hmm, fantastic. All right. Swish it around. It's gonna be kind of hard to see these legs on this particular glass because of all the star shapes, which bring out extra essences of passion, um, which is why we do it. And uh, don't spill. So let's take a look at these legs. Eh. Actually, it's very sticky. It's probably gonna have a little bit more of a sweet texture to it because the sugar builds up and actually causes these lines to stay in place. So let's see what we smell like. Hmm. Hmm. Smells like, smells like extra special whiskey. That's what it smells like. That's what it smells like exactly. Um, yeah, let's give it a taste. This is why I bought like 18 bottles of this. Absolutely fantastic, very, very smooth. If you don't like drinking whiskey normally, give this a try. It's worth it um, purely because of the fact that you're not gonna waste any of it. You're not gonna wish that you didn't drink it. It's very smooth, has a very much of a uh, kind of a almost fruity aftertaste. Um, really brings out the nectar and the name Nectar Doer something like that. 
Um, my biggest critique on this particular whiskey is that you must have a mustache. If you don't have a mustache, you really can't enjoy this whiskey because as you're drinking it, you want to think and kind of twirl the ends of your mustache. It's very much of a mustache twirler. It's not so much of a, you know, sit there at a drinks party, kind of slosh it around. This is a thinking whiskey, very much of a thinking one. You want to get a good book, maybe read something like a dictionary or the Encyclopedia Britannica, maybe start in volume J because J is one of the least used letters of the alphabet other than Z. So uh, definitely want to do that as you're thinking about everything. Um, all of you people that enjoy playing Hangman, there's actually an algorithm that goes into actually being able to win and guess the correct version of whatever the word is. There is a very easy way of remembering how the most common letters of the alphabet are used, and that is the simple phrase etonrish. It's E-T-O-A-N-R-I-S-H. Those are the top most used letters. So if you use those letters and guess those first, the chances are that half the word will actually be finished. The last two letters used in the American alphabet, Z and J, in that order. Cheers. Really, uh, what's really interesting about this particular still at Glenmorangie, Morangie, 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 is the fact that uh, they actually, out of their kind of quest for being one of the more eloquent and better tasting whiskeys, is that on this particular one, they actually imported oak casks from America in order to mature their still or their whiskey in Scotland. Um, which is very kind of intriguing. They only would take the best casks from around the world, especially different vineyards and whatnot, in order to age this. It's part of the reason why they say that it's the golden nectar whiskey or the nectar duar, duar. But um, really, they just wanted to make sure that they had the extra time maturing in the right particular casks in order to get that best taste. The taste of it really brings out different berries, different types of... Uh, freshness at the end of it, which makes it not as harsh as a normal whiskey and something that you can really drink and enjoy. I would say this is a regular everyday drinking whiskey, but really you should be budgeting for like 150 grand a year in order to do that. Um, so best start uh, YouTube channel reviewing whiskeys. That way it's a tax write off. Cheers. Hmm. Definitely some lime and orange peel rinds inside of this. Um, kind of has a hint of some sort of spices, almost like nutmeg. Um, kind of really brings off a really good aroma. Um, balances out very evenly. It's kind of like when you put apples in like a really spicy salad. It just really rounds it out. Gives it something else as far as a flavor. Cools it down. And on top of that, really make sure that we're not overpowering on any sort of high octane alcohol which speaking of which technically 16 men built well technically 17 but 16 men are given credit for building this particular whiskey they're called the 16 of Tain. there used to be 17 because carl used to be one of them carl is a russian and he decided that he preferred vodka over any sort of whiskey so one day they were talking to him they're like hey what's your favorite drink and he was like oh my favorite drink is uh, vodka from motherland and they said ah we're gonna stay at 16 people that created this you're gone so root of the story is if you uh don't like the product that you're working for don't tell the company that employs you that you don't like their product same workman's comp And we're live.